Hey guys, welcome to the RGB channel. Remember this beauty over here? This is the RGB 10 from PowKD and we reviewed it more than a month back. And ever since we reviewed it, it has been my daily driver. Now we're going to get into the reason to why this has been my daily driver. I know some of you guys might be wondering why I chose this over other devices. And we're going to introduce today the black edition of the PowKD RGB 10 since it came out a little bit later than the RGB 10 yellow edition. And I want to see if there are any differences or not. We're going to have a little bit of an overview over the black edition and what we're also going to do today is we're going to compare Batocera running on the black edition to Emulalic like running on the yellow edition. These are both firmwares you can run on any RK3326 chipset devices and that's what we're going to do today. So let's get into the unboxing. Here we have the handheld itself. Let's take a look at the uh, bottom compartment we have a charger cable USB type-c of course we have um, black nubs this time it is black not uh, red like the yellow edition so I'm happy with that at least you have a more homogeneous look to it which is very good and we have a user manual which is in both English and uh, Chinese also in Japanese apparently as I can see over here we have Japanese, Chinese, and English. Very nice. So let's put it to the side and take a look at the handheld itself. Oh, mama. That is awesome. Uh, we have a black RGB 10. It has been my daily driver for a while, so I'm happy with the black edition. Now I can have this one as my daily driver until the uh, RG351 comes out. And we're going to see if that really replaces this one or not. I'm going to add my own nub to it because I have better nubs than the ones that are included in here. Here we are with the Nintendo Switch nub. Let's just add it to it. So there we go and we have a Nintendo Switch knob on it right now. So my opinion about this device is that it is the right balance in terms of build quality and button feel. The buttons feel great, the build quality is very good. Uh, it is like the lower end is the RK2020 not being at a very high build quality level and the higher end is the Retroid Pocket being at a very good build quality level for a plastic device. And this one is right there in the middle, so I like that a lot about this device. The only gripe I have about this device is that the L and R buttons are very close to each other, so it's easy to mispress them and make that kind of mistake, which is kind of a bummer uh, in my opinion. For the rest, the buttons feel great, the build quality is great, and I love this device to bits. So a lot of you guys might be asking the question, why are you using the RGB 10 compared to the Retroid Pocket, even though the Retroid Pocket obviously more superior, it has Wi-Fi, it has HDMI, it has a better screen and aspect ratio, it has better speakers, it has a bigger battery and more inputs. I'd say yes, that's all correct, but I like Emulalic more than Android. And that is the main reason why I use this device, because Emulalic uh, brings out the power of the device a little bit more than Android, and you don't need to mess out with the settings a lot before you can play some N64 games and stuff like that, and that's important to me. So it's more like personal preference than anything else. If this one was running Emulalic, I definitely will pick this over the RGB 10, but until that happens, I'm going to stick to the RGB 10 and Emulalic running devices before I can move on to the Retroid Pocket 2. So the only difference I notice between the yellow edition and the black edition is that the uh, charging uh, symbols are different and that the boot logos have been changed. So let's check that out. So we have RGB 10 on this one and hard kernel on this one. Let's see which one boots up faster, Emulalic on the black one or Batocera on the yellow one. I'm not sure what I said just a while back, but uh, the yellow one is Batocera and this one is Emulalic. So let's see which one is faster. Emulalic seems to have finished already. Batocera is right after it. Even though Bat Zero had a faster start than Emulalic, it still was a little bit later, but that's not really a deal breaker. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to see the differences in the operating system. I'm going to tell you what the differences are in the emulators and stuff like that. Uh, I put all the amount of games, the same amount of games on these two SD cards. They are the same speed as well. So this is a fair uh, battle. 
So the speed in booting is not really a problem between these two, but the problem here comes in with uh, the fact that Batocera has a lot less emulators than Emulalic over here. Uh, so let's check that out. It starts with Atari on Batocera and Arcade on Emulalic. And let's test out the list. We don't have CPS 1, 2, 3 on Batocera. That's a bummer, really. We don't have Nintendo DS on Batocera, while well, we do have it on Emulalic. The list seems to have finished on Batocera already, while the list goes on on Emulalic. And that is the list. Now, that is a big problem, in my opinion, between Batocera and Emulalic, so a big point, a thumbs up to Emulalic for having more emulators. Now, let's move on to some performance-hungry uh, gameplay and see the differences in that. Now, we're running Flycast on both of these operating systems. Remember that the upper one is Batocera and the lower one is Emulalic. Uh, these are, of course, running Greencast emulator uh, called Flycast, in case you didn't know. And we're running uh, Rayman 2, The Great Escape, on both of these devices. They're completely on par with each other, and they're completely in sync. But as I mentioned, Batocera has less emulators than Emulalic, so keep that in mind. And also another issue that I had with Batocera, since that we have time right now, we can talk about that. Uh, the other issue I had with Batocera is that if I press L2, it will raise the volume, and if I press the minus button, it will lower the volume. So those are two buttons that are occupied by this function, and you cannot change that via the configuration files. So if you're playing games and you press L2, you want to just press that button to play your game, you cannot do that because it has the volume up and volume down buttons uh, mapped to that, which is quite a bummer in my opinion. But this just goes to show that Batocera is not made for these knockoff devices. I think that this is not the issue with the original Old Red Go Advance, since that, that is what it is made for, uh, but only with the RK2020 and this uh, RGB10. And that is that for the issues I had with Batocera. Let's now move on uh, to PSP emulator. We are running PPS SPP on both of these devices. And we're running Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep on both of these devices, in case you wanted to know. Now, uh, PPS SPP on Batocera has frame skipping going on, and both of them have automatic frame skipping, but uh, on Batocera it really requires it, and it is really relying on frame skipping, which is something that you don't like to see while having some uh, quality time with your handheld. So... It is better to use Emulalic if you like to play PSP games. As you can see in this scene, uh, Roxas or uh, Ventus is running a lot smoother in this uh, scene compared to Batocera on Emulalic. Now let's move on and talk about the N64 emulation. We're running Mupen uh, 64 Plus Libretro on Emulalic and we're running uh, Mupen 64 Plus Standalone on Batocera. On um, Batocera, the uh, resolution is a lot higher than the uh, Emulalic one, and it is lacking, lagging behind just by a little bit, which is quite a good feat in my opinion. So at least in N64, Batocera is kind of better than uh, Emulalic, even though Emulalic is going a little bit faster right now than Batocera, but that is because the resolution is a lot less and it's very noticeable when you're playing the game. So it is a lot more crisp on Batocera compared to Emulalic. Now this brings me to the point and my verdict on Batocera versus uh, Emulalic. I think Emulalic in general is a better operating system than Batocera for these types of devices and knockoffs of Odroid Go Advance. So uh, I think that you have to pick Emulalic because it is better in PSP and it's good in Dreamcast, like they're on par with each other, but it has more emulators and it doesn't have that issue with the audio uh, raising and lowering issue that it's mapped to the buttons and stuff like that in Batocera on MUL, like we don't have that issue. So that's it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and tell me what you think in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.